Well, crankbaits will come and crankbaits will go. And today on Retro Bastion, we're going to be looking at an old discontinued lure from Rebel, the Black Star. Stick around because we're going to be taking this crazy crank on Lake Travis to see if we can still catch a bass. Retro Bassin, kicking some ass in wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about Bill Dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40 year old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Out on the bass boat, making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin. I am definitely a sucker for oddball and gimmick lures, and even though this is a crankbait, technically, this is one of the craziest crankbaits I've ever seen. This is called the Black Star, and at one time, Rebel thought this was going to be the future of crankbait fishing. I do have some Rebel Black Stars I'll have to dig out for a future episode. In the meantime, I've got the six main colors of the Black Star, that I just pulled out of my Umco tackle box. And <laughs> yeah, this is one wild, wild crankbait. Before we get this thing on the water on Lake Travis, I do wanna take a brief look at the history of the Rebel Black Star. At least what little history I could uncover flipping through my vintage Bass Pro Shops master catalogs. The bait first appeared in the Bass Pro Shops 1987 master catalog. And there is a pretty awesome half page spread dedicated to the Black Star. I'll go ahead and read the verbiage from this spread. Oh, it's a goodie. The Black Star, new by Rebel, entering a new era of fishing lore technology. For nearly a decade, fishermen have come to respect the use of graphite in their equipment. This remarkable carbon based material reduces weight, adds strength, and most importantly, it provides super sensitivity. The line tied the Black Star is molded in graphite. When combined with a graphite rod, it allows the angler to detect every bit of the lure's action during retrieve. Black Star also heralds the introduction of a new process in lure coloration. All the colors are molded into the upper module, which forms concentric rings that collect and amplify light rays. To complete the high-tech look, all hooks and hardware have a black sheath finish. The underside spoon-like design gives incredible stability both during long casts and high-speed retrieves. This bait is a floater and on normal retrieve runs five and a half to six and a half foot depth. The Black Star came in at an ounce and a half and three and a quarter inches and was available for $4.27 in 1987. Here are the six original colors that the Black Star came in in 1987. First one is the black, and it's sort of a smoke black back with a chrome side. Nice little red eye. And this one is a rattler. We've also got purple, just sort of a nice translucent purple top, clear side, and you get a good look at the rattles inside. Also came in orange. Uh, this one is a little bit unique. Uh, you can see that it does not rattle and the inside actually has a sort of prism look to it. So definitely uh, a pretty different version of the Black Star. Here is one that is chartreuse. Pretty cool looking color. Nice translucent chartreuse with a clear side. And after we get off the water, we'll talk about why this bait actually has water in it. We've got red, pretty similar to the orange actually, minus the prism tape and just a slight different hue. And last, the blue, uh, which is also, I think, yep, one of those silent models with that prism tape on the inside. Next in the Black Star timeline is the 1988 Bass Pro Shops Master Catalog. And just like many other gimmick style lures, as sales dwindle, so does ad size. 
and you can see that the black star here is relegated to a quarter page down from a half page just the year before. Still available for $4.27 and still entering a new era of fishing lure technology, or at least a two-year-old era of fishing lure technology. Still available in the same six colors that were initially released uh, with pretty much the same verbiage and description of the bait. And if you didn't pick up a Black Star in 1988, by 1989 it might have been too late as the Black Star disappeared from the Bass Pro Shops Master Catalog from this year forward. So without further ado, we are going to take the discontinued Rebel Black Star over to Lake Travis and see if he can still catch bass today. We are just getting on the water on Lake Travis. Uh, as you can tell, I've got my trialing jacket on. It is a little bit chilly for Texas. It's kind of funny, but I feel like the Texas weather has two speeds. Either it is uh, basically desert summer, which is like 10 months of the year, or it is winter and there's blizzards. And somewhere in between there, there's about two days of fall. And I think we've got one of those two days now. I'm hoping this cold weather is pushing those fish a little bit shallow. Uh, we're gonna hit a few spots. Luckily, it is not too too windy. I tried to get on the water yesterday, and I just got like basically blown off the lake. So, kind of licked my wounds, uh, rigged up some rods, and now we're back at it. Ooh, this has a good wiggle. It does. This has a good wiggle. <sighs> Looks like something out of Tron, but it has a good wiggle. Got one. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Got one on the old Rebel Black Star. Oh wow, that's a nice, oh, that's a nice fish too. Oh man. Oh man, that guy hit really, really shallow. That was funky. Oh man, come on buddy. Whoa, whoa. Oh, woo. Oh, that's a good looking bass. Come here buddy. Oh, uh, check out that dude on the old school Rebel Black Star. Look at that. Oh, that's a nice little bass, isn't it? Uh, that is a whole lot of technology going on right there. Look at that. <laughs> I think there might have been a little school of fish up there because when I threw this thing in, there was a swirl up top, and then that guy hit. There's one. Oh, another nice fish. Oh. Another nice fish on the old Rebel Black Star. Man, there is a little school of fish up in there. Woo -hoo -hoo. Another nice fish. That guy was bu -bu barely hooked. That was really interesting. There's definitely a little school of fish up there. Nice little point, and that's the second fish in a row off of it. Woo, just barely hooked. Guess the old chartreuse was a ticket, huh? <laughs> All right, well, we're gonna circle around and get back in there and see if we can get a third. <laughs> That's the weirdest bait ever. I was kind of come up to this boathouse. I'm swinging around and then casting right up on this nice little point. Man, I like this.
Oh. Oh, another nice fish. Oh man. <laughs> Now it's a multi-species day. Nice little guad. Check him out. Solid, solid little Guadalupe bass on the old Black Star. Interestingly, it's when I find largemouth, I tend to find guads. I don't really find a pocket of just one or the other. They definitely coexist uh, in at least this lake. There's the bait. Pretty little fish. Oh, ow. <laughs> okay, one thing I don't love about the Black Star, and it did it on this cast, the back hook and the front hook are just within reach so that if you do just the perfectly wrong cast, uh, those two will hook. That is like the third or fourth time that's happened. This morning's are not, not ideal. I will definitely write the company to uh, air my grievances. Because <laughs> Rebel's going to care now. Oh, there's one. Oh, man, these fish are super, whoo, super shallow today. Oh, wow. Nice fish. Oh, 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 oh. oh, my goodness. He hit that thing like a topwater. Oh, there he is. Oh, let's get him in. Oh, there we go. Man, another nice cranking fish. Oh. <laughs> one of these days I'm going to hook myself on camera. I can just tell you. Holy cow, hopefully it's not today. Please don't be today. Well, there we go. Another really pretty bass on the old Rebel Black Star. Man, that thing is put into work today, isn't it? <laughs> it's so funny. Um, all of the uh, things we do today to try to find the most natural, realistic looking crankbait, and look at it. <laughs> this thing right out of space is uh, putting it on them. Nice. All right, we just got off the water on Lake Travis. Actually, that was a little bit of an abbreviated fishing trip, but it was pretty cool to at least get a couple bass on the old school Black Star crankbait. First off, let's talk about my initial impressions of this bait. This bait fishes about as weird as it looks. There is nothing normal about this crankbait. First thing, it does have a snap line tie which attaches to that graphite keel. Uh, there is only one position, so you can't adjust it. Uh, a lot of baits like that kind of have maybe two or three positions, sort of a deeper, shallow, and mid-range. This just has one, um, and this is supposed to increase sensitivity. Is this bait more sensitive than the average crankbait? Um, you know what? I could actually feel it pretty good on the bottom. I don't know if it was more sensitive, but it definitely was not less. Another unique thing about the Black Star is the bill. And hopefully you can appreciate it on camera here, but it is a, a sort of built-in curved bill, but the surface of the bill has sort of a curve to it. Uh, most crankbaits are really flat across the top, but this one really has a unique curve. Definitely gave it a sort of wiggle wart style uh, wobble. Uh, I know it said you can reel it really fast in the ad, I don't necessarily think so. I think when I reeled this thing fast, it was just kind of too crazy to, to keep under control. But unique shape bill and definitely added to uh, some of the erratic action of this bait. The body of the lure itself is two parts. The colored plastic up top, which looks fused to the clear bottom. Uh, a really unique joint in crankbaits. And um, one that probably when you see what happened to the two baits I fished with today, you'll know why they discontinued. Inside of the bait, it's got a funky eye. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> and a couple of little, uh, I don't know if those are graphite BBs, but they look like it. Let's listen to this thing and see what it sounds like. Sort of a high-pitched rattle, actually. It definitely is a unique sound. It doesn't sound like your average crankbait, that's for sure. Uh, a little bit more high-pitched, a little bit more hollow, I guess. And the bottom of the bait doesn't necessarily have a keel, but it's actually got sort of a cavity. Look at that. 
And I don't know what the purpose of that is, but probably led to the, uh, we'll say, unique action of this bait. And lastly, it was finished off with a pair of hooks, sort of a matte black finish. Now, let's talk about that two-piece design and what happened to that bait on the water. Uh, the first one I fished with before I switched to the chartreuse was this blue bait. And I fished it fine. I don't think I bounced this thing off too many rocks. But after I put it back in my tackle box and looked at it a few hours later, I actually could see a lot of condensation on the inside of the bait. So that tells me that this seal from the top to the bottom is not altogether perfect. And clearly some water was getting in there, even though you can't see any right now. The bait I did fish with most of the day, and the bait that I caught all four fish on, was the chartreuse. I can uh, admit that I definitely bounced this thing off a few Lake Travis rocks, but uh, it seems solid. There's no split that you can identify. Yet, there is 100% water in that bait. So somewhere along the way, uh, there's a little bit of a leak in between the top and the bottom, I'm assuming, or perhaps at this rear hook hanger. And yeah, water got in the bait, so that is not ideal. Aside from that though, and again, I was pretty hard on this bait, uh, it did hold up well, it did fish really well, and if I had a little bit longer to fish with, I totally would throw this again. As you can tell, I'm on just a little bit of a crankbait bender. So in the comments below, let me know what OG crankbait you'd like to see me fish with next. At least while that fall fishing is in full swing. And if you guys are looking for more old school content, click right here. Otherwise, I'll see you right back here, same time, same place, next Saturday. And until then, keep the carpet side up. And definitely. Fishing old school. Fishing it old school, this old stuff moves. Welcome to Retro.